take it away. Jenny Horn has given us, Tom and I, both all we know about Pinterest. A really great setup from Jenny. You know, when we look at Pinterest through the lens of uh, like folio data, really, uh, there's two key drivers of Pinterest's revenue growth, and that is the number of users and the amount of activity that's happening on the platform. And when we look at that, uh, you know, we see really rapid growth, and we saw it spark during uh, the beginning stages of the pandemic, but it's holding really, really well because Pinterest provides users with a really good experience. So when they came to the the site, uh, they stuck around. We see that up 68% year over year. So uh, that's just overall mentions of Pinterest. That's pretty um, reflective of usage. So that's one element of revenue growth. The other, of course, that you guys have already alluded to is how many people are actually shopping on the site. And I could make the argument that Pinterest is a little bit more of a shopping and discovery site than it is really a social network. And we see uh, shopping on Pinterest mentions, you know, continuing to climb plus 12% year over year. You can think of this as a barometer of how effective Pinterest is at monetizing its users. So they've got a lot more users and they're doing a better job of monetizing them. And so uh, that combination is really good. Pinterest is executing uh, in a really big way. And like Tom alluded to, I think a really important point here they have a huge number of international users, about 79% of their uh, of their um, of their total users. But when you compare the monetization compared to you know U.S. users, uh, the the international user is generating about 35 cents per year for Pinterest, whereas the U.S. user is generating almost six dollars per year uh, in terms of revenue. So that gap is enormous. I'd like to hear from the company how much they think that gap can close uh, because there's definitely some significant gains to be made in the monetization of those international users. But overall, um, you know, just a really good platform that is really sticky in terms of when people come to it, uh, they tend to stay and uh, they're doing a much better job of monetizing those users. And it looks like they're continuing to do so because they're investing in those categories really heavily. Yeah, and Andy, I think if you take a look at this and maybe you have some more data from other companies within this space, uh, and I agree with you, I think it's more of a shopping site than it is like a social media type platform. But if you look at the, the amount of um, advertising that's starting to come on these platforms, whether it's Instagram, uh, Pinterest, Snap, and these others, don't you think with a base of 470 million people that uh, monthly active users on this platform, do you see that uh, the uh, the advertising revenue dollars is starting to pick up uh, on these platforms as opposed to traditional ways uh, of advertisers using their dollars? Yeah, absolutely. You're, they're, they're putting the money there. And the cool thing about Pinterest is it allows advertisers to get really specific about where they're advertising. You know, unlike on Twitter or Facebook, or Instagram even, where you know quite a bit about the user. Uh, Pinterest knows quite a bit about the specific topic that the user is looking at because that's the way things are organized there. And so, like Jenny was talking about, two and three word keyword searches uh, tells me that, they, that the users are looking for something fairly specific, and Pinterest has a huge advantage uh, in, in that type of um, f format because they have you know that level of topical expertise thanks to all of their other users. And so instead of just pushing ads to people based on what we think you'll like, Pinterest actually integrates into the user experience really well and allows the user kind of to pull ads towards themselves that are very relevant and that are shopping enabled. So, um, you know, a really nice platform uh, for shopping and engagement. Andy, I want to dig in to the revenue numbers that you put out, that revenue per user in the U.S. Ver ver versus, you know, o overseas. Uh, you said $6 versus $0.35. Cents. Now, is that a credit to uh, just, you know, it, it, it's uh, starting out overseas and not as mature as the U.S.? Or is that a credit to, let's say, the U.S. consumer and how powerful they are? 
Yeah, that's what I'd like a lot more clarity on from the company because I think that's yeah. a big open question is how big is that gap naturally? How how big is that gap between the yeah. international consumer and the U.S. consumer compared to how much of it is just the maturity of the platform and their ability to attract advertisers overseas? If it turns out that there's a huge amount of demand and that the users internationally uh, have a, you know, a propensity to spend even half as much as Americans, then you see how this could get to three dollars per international user, um, you know, and that really changes the dial for Pinterest. But if it's something very different sure. than that, this is what investors need to know. And I don't think that the company's provided a whole lot of clarity on that. They may not have it uh, because it is a little bit of a less mature market. But when it makes up seventy-nine percent of your total user base, it's a question I think that needs to be answered.